Let us now start proving the arrow's impossibility result. So just to remember what the arrow's uh, impossibility was, so if we had three or more alternatives uh, in, a, uh, in the social welfare uh, function domain, so we have a social Arrowian social welfare function f and let's recall uh, what that f was, f was uh, actually a mapping from the uh, ordinal preferences of all these agents it is taking as input all the ordinal preferences uh, of the agents and popping out one complete ordering over all these uh, alternatives. And if this uh, Arrowian social welfare function satisfies this property of weak Pareto and IIA, which we have discussed in the previous module, then it must be dictatorial. So that is the uh, result by arrow and we will use uh, uh, the, both these properties uh, weak Pareto and IIA to prove that this uh, uh, result holds. So in order to uh, proceed with the proof we need uh, the notions of decisiveness. So now what is decisiveness? Uh, informally you can think of this as a group of individuals, group of uh, uh, agents uh, if they decide a specific ordering over a pair of alternatives, then that alternative will also come out as the social uh, ordering of, over those alternatives. So you, you can imagine that out of these N agents, there is a group of agents uh, who are uh, keeping a specific pair of alternatives, let's say A and B, uh, in a specific uh, way. And that uh, ordering is being reflected when you are looking at the final ordering. Uh, given by the Sadovian social welfare function. So that is the uh, the intuitive notion of uh, decisiveness. Let us make it formal. So suppose we have this uh, A, A uh, SWF um, which is given by this and suppose we have a, a group, a subset of the agents denoted by G and of course that, that is not uh, empty we are going to call that set to be almost decisive over this uh, alternatives A and B if the following thing happens and we are now familiar with this notation that is whenever this happens uh, whatever I write within this uh, square brackets whenever that happens this implies that this outcome this is the uh, the implication of that uh, uh, happening. So what it is uh, saying it is saying that for all those agents which are in that group in that uh, uh, almost decisive group, uh, A is strictly above B, A is uh, strictly preferred than B and if you are looking at all the agents which are not living in that group, uh, that almost decisive group, uh, then B should be strictly above A. So if this happens, then immediately the conclusion is that the in the total or in the final outcome of this uh, Arrowian social welfare function, A should be strictly above B. So that is what it means. So why is it uh, almost decisive? Because it is almost like saying that uh, uh, if this uh, group decides that A should be above B, strictly above B, so even in the, uh, the most opposing situation where all the other uh, uh, agents are thinking that B should be strictly above A, still uh, the conclusion among A and B of that group uh, uh, G is uh, still prevailing. So that is why we call this an almost decisive thing. Uh, we will some we will essentially denote this almost decisiveness using this uh, notation that mm, mm, D of G. So this G is essentially the group which is uh, almost decisive, and to uh, denote that this is almost decisive, we use the upper bar, and this is between these two alternatives A and B. Now we make this notion of decisiveness a little more stronger. Now we don't really care whether the other agents are actually in favor of uh, B uh, over A or they are still in favor of A versus B. So you, you can see that now in the if condition, the second part has actually disappeared. And we have already uh, did this discussion in the previous uh, definition of weak Pareto that whenever in the if condition you have less, condi uh, less uh, constraints. So of course if uh, if this uh, specific condition is true, 
then it is actually a superset of uh, of this condition because if this condition you can call capital y and th th this condition here this if condition you call x then y uh, all the uh, preferences that will satisfy this y condition will certainly be larger and you you have this uh, smaller set which is x these conditions will be more strict because not only you have the condition of y you also have something more so therefore it, it uh, the the if condition will be smaller so this uh, um, uh, y is a little relaxed condition and uh, even on that relaxed condition you are uh, having the same conclusion so that is the reason when when you are looking at a, a more relaxed condition but the conclusion is the same then that property that decisiveness property becomes a little stronger than the other other condition so of course uh, and we are going to denote this decisiveness um, uh, the property of decisiveness with this uh, uh, shorthand notation dg and there is no upper bar anymore so this is decisive between a and b this group g is decisive over a and b uh, with respect to that uh, Arovian social welfare function f and it is uh, very natural to conclude that this uh, uh, implication holds if a group is decisive then it is it is uh, uh, almost decisive now in order to so we uh, define this and now we are going to jump into the proof and uh, before I get into the, uh, the details of the proof, let us just uh, discuss the overall idea, how we are actually uh, going to prove this result. And it will be, uh, the theorem will be proved in two parts. The first part is essentially what is known as field expansion lemma. So if we are looking at a group which is uh, decisive over a pair of alternatives, we will actually show that this is almost decisive, not only decisive, it's even weaker, uh, almost decisive. So remember that this, if it is decisive, that's a stronger condition. We are going to assume a little weaker condition. We are going to assume that this is uh, almost decisive over a pair of alternatives. Then the field expansion lemma says that it is going to be decisive. Now look at this. So this is, we are uh, concluding a much stronger condition, stronger result that it is decisive over all pairs of alternatives, not only uh, between those two things. So that is why it is called the field expansion, as if you are expanding the idea of decisiveness over all possible alternatives. Now once we have that, then the second part is essentially uh, known as the group contraction lemma. And uh, as the name suggests that um, if you have a group which is uh, decisive, then uh, this group contraction lemma says that you can look at a strict subset of that uh, group uh, which is also decisive and now uh, you can you can already begin to see that why these two parts essentially proves the lemma uh, proves the theorem because uh, if you look at the field expansion lemma you know that uh, if uh, um, uh, if uh, if you look at the whole set so if g is actually equal to n uh, then by weak Pareto we already know that that is going to be decisive uh, because if everyone is preferring A over B by weak Pareto uh, we already know that the, the outcome uh, will be uh, in the final outcome A will also be above B. Now if, uh, if you now apply field expansion lemma then you know that this is uh, so this is decisive over uh, uh, this pair of alternatives and you can actually replicate that for any pair of alternatives. So it is going to be decisive over all pairs of alternatives. So that is the first part. Now I can uh, repeatedly use the group contraction lemma to reduce uh, the uh, set size, the, the, the set of almost decisive uh, uh, individuals at, uh, until you have only one individual left and that individual is going to be the dictator. So that individual's uh, preference over any pair of alternative is going to be the final outcome. And that essentially is the arrows impossibility result. Okay, so that is the overall idea. Let us now go into proving this, uh, each of these uh, lemmas one by one. So the first one is the field expansion lemma. What does it say? So suppose we have this uh, Arovian social welfare function f that satisfies weak Pareto and IIA then for all uh, such alternatives a b x and y uh, with the with the condition that g is essentially a subset of n and it is not uh, empty 
and certainly a is not equal to b and x is not equal to y then what is going to happen is that if uh, this set g is a is almost decisive between a and b then it is going to uh, imply that it is going to be decisive uh, over uh, that x and y where x and y are arbitrary so we can immediately observe uh, as a as a uh, as a byproduct of this field expansion lemma uh, is that uh, whenever we are uh, talking about these two properties weak pareto and iia these two notions of decisiveness are identical because we already know that if something is uh, is decisive then that is going to be um, almost decisive now this is saying the other way around that if you uh, if you are uh, almost decisive then you should also be uh, decisive because x can take values like a and y can take values b then uh, in this case uh, almost decisive if a set g is almost decisive over this uh, pair of alternatives a b then that is also implying that it, it is decisive over that over the same pair of alternatives okay so that's just a remark now in order to prove the lemma we will have to consider uh, a bunch of cases and here I am listing down all the cases exhaustively uh, let us look at that first and we are going to go over them in a specific order so that it is helping us in the uh, in the proof so of course uh, we'll have to uh, look at different uh, conditions on X and Y so the first condition could be that X is neither a nor B and Y is also neither a nor B then you can look at x being equal to a but y is not equal to a or b uh, and x can be equal to b and uh, y is not equal to a or b similarly the uh, other way around uh, x uh, y can be equal to b or a and x does not uh, uh, is not equal to uh, in any of a or b and the last two conditions are that uh, x is equal to a and y is equal to b and the other way around x is b and y is a. so this essentially lists down all possible cases uh, just that we are going uh, over uh, over all these cases in a specific order such that uh, the the proof we can use the first uh, two cases into in the next next set of cases all right so let us now focus on uh, case a uh, case one where uh, we are supposed to prove that if it is uh, if uh, this set G is almost decisive over A and B, then it should be decisive over A and Y, where Y is not equal to A or B. Right? Now, how? Uh, so let me tell you the the general strategy how we are going to do it. We are going to um, uh, pick some arbitrary R. We'll have to show that this uh, this is decisive. That means we'll have to show for all uh, arbitrary R on which this if, if condition holds. So remember the, uh, the, the definition of uh, decisiveness, the if condition of that decisive uh, part. So um, you might be wondering what is that if, if part. So if is nothing but this part. So if this holds, then we'll have to show this. So, uh, so in this uh, context, what is that if? So you can pick some arbitrary R on which, uh, because we'll have to show this uh, decisiveness between A and Y, A is strictly preferred over Y for all the agents in that uh, group G and then we will have to show that uh, when you are looking at the aggregated uh, uh, outcome there also A should be strictly above Y. So this is uh, something that we will have to show and this is what we are given. Now we, we are going to do it via uh, a different um, um, uh, preference profile which we are going to call R prime. And why is that R prime important? Because uh, you uh, see that the property of IIA, the independence of irrelevant alternatives, are between two different preference profiles. And we are going to uh, pick this R prime in such a way that the relative uh, position, relative position of these two alternatives A and Y, um, remains the same for all the agents uh, uh, as you have chosen in R. So, so that we can actually use IIA and we'll do construct this R prime in a clever way. So, how are we going to uh, construct it? We look at all the G's uh, on which uh, A is above B, B is above Y. I do not really care about the other alternatives. They can be anywhere. 
um, just uh, A should be above B, B should be above uh, Y. And for all the other cases, and uh, this is required because uh, um, uh, we have to have A above Y. What are we doing uh, in the in the rest of the agent's case is that we are going to put B to be uh, strictly above Y, uh, uh, B to be strictly above both A and Y. And between A and Y, we are going to retain the same ordering uh, um, for this agents, what was there in R. So you can look at this uh, Ri prime. We have kept A and Y in, in such a way. Uh, if um, if in the original Ri A was above uh, Y, then for that particular agent we'll keep A above Y. Uh, if it was if it was Y above A, then we would have kept that. If they were indifferent, then we will keep that uh, indifferent. And this is something that we are going to do for all the agents. So uh, the the relative position of A and Y remains the same for uh, R prime as well as in R. Now let us first use the first condition. Uh, that is, this is uh, decisive between A and B, right? So we have we already know. I mean, this is the given uh, uh, condition for case one. So since this is, this is almost decisive. Uh, we can use that because here you can see for G, uh, A is above B and B is above A uh, for all the agents uh, which are outside G. So uh, then by the definition of this almost decisiveness, we can conclude that A should be strictly above B in this R prime because this is, uh, this is the profile R prime. Fair enough. Now we have the, uh, the next condition is that we have weak parrot over B and Y. And now we can see that B is strictly above Y for all the agents. And um, uh, weak Pareto just says that it, it is going to be, uh, then B should be uh, strictly above Y in the final outcome as well. Now we have this A is strictly above B, B is strictly above Y uh, for the same outcome, um, uh, outcome A, F of R prime. Now we can apply transitivity, which will say that A is strictly above Y, right? Now that is exactly what we wanted. In this case, uh, we know that R prime has the same relative ordering, ordering between A and Y for all the agents. And uh, we, have, uh, we have kept it in, in, uh, in, the, in that way. So for all the agents, uh, uh, for all the agents, the relative position between A and Y is the same in R prime as well as in R. And we have all, all also shown that uh, in this uh, final outcome of f of r prime, a is strictly above y. Now, uh, now we are uh, just going to use the condition of IIA because uh, what IIA is saying is that if the relative position remains same, then this uh, um, uh, the final outcome between that two alternatives will also remain same. So by that we can conclude that even in r. A, uh, in f of r, a should be strictly above y, right? And that is exactly what we wanted to show. So remember this: we need to show that this is this is the case, and uh, therefore we have proved that uh, uh, this group G is uh, decisive between a and y. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first case. The second case is that if you have uh, uh, the decisiveness, so the left hand side remains the the same, it is uh, almost decisive, the group G is almost decisive between this uh, pair of alternatives A and B. Then we will have to show that X which is neither A nor B uh, and between these two alternatives X and B, uh, G is decisive. So uh, as before we will have to pick some arbitrary R such that X is strictly preferred over B. So this is the if condition of the uh, decisiveness. Uh, so this uh, strict uh, um, a preference between X and B holds for all the agents in G and we don't care about the uh, a, uh, the other agents. We have to show that X is strictly above B even uh, in the final outcome of F of R. And as before we are going to construct another R prime and in, in a very uh, similar uh, or complementary way. Now what we have to uh, pick is X is strictly above A. A is strictly above B and we are going to pick uh, the case that X and P both are more preferred than A for all the agents which are, which are not in G. 
but again uh, between x and b we are going to keep the ordering the same as r so uh, we have constructed r prime in that way now because this is uh, uh, almost decisive between a and b and you can see that here a is above b for for all the agents in g and outside g b is above a so then by the definition of uh, almost decisiveness uh, a should be strictly above b in this uh, uh, preference profile r, r prime f of r prime now using this weak pareto between x and a because x and a has the same ordering for all the agents so everybody is actually preferring x over a so weak pareto should say that x should be above a now we have this again we are going to use transit transitivity between these two things then we can have that um, x is uh, x is more preferred uh, strictly more preferred uh, in this if uh, if our prime than b that we already know by transitivity now uh, once we have that and because between x and b uh, the the relative ordering uh, over all these uh, agents are same in R and R prime, then we can use IIA and conclude that X should be strictly above B even in F of R. And that uh, ends the proof. So we, we have already proved that uh, this is uh, this G is also decisive over X and B. So that is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so now that we know how to prove uh, case 1 and case 2, case 3 and the, the rest of the cases will essentially use these uh, conditions in a in some clever way. I am just going to go over this case 3 and uh, rest of the things you can just do a reading exercise. It's just uh, I want to skip that because it's just uh, repetitive. So uh, what we have here, so uh, let's go back to case 3. So case 3 was the case where uh, if you have uh, al almost decisiveness between A and B, then you are going to have decisiveness between X and Y where none of them are equal to A or B. So uh, how should we do that? So we do it one by one. So first we apply case one uh, where we know that this is going to be, so if, if you keep the first condition same, the first uh, alternative same, then this uh, almost decisiveness implies the decisiveness here. So between A and B and here uh, A and Y where y is uh, not equal to a or b that that was case one now because this is decisive by definition this is going to be almost decisive almost decisive between the same alternatives now you can apply the the, uh, the second case that we have proved so now the second alternative remains same and the first alternative changes and of course x is neither a nor b so that will be uh, that will be the conclusion so using just case one and case 2 with the along with the definition of decisiveness we get uh, case 3 and similarly we are going to use the the rest of the cases case 4 case 5 case 6 and case 7 they are just uh, uh, carefully using the, the conditions that we have already proved i'm just skipping that let us now come to the second part of this uh, theorem which is the group contraction lemma so as we have already mentioned that uh, if we have this uh, Adovian social welfare function that satisfies weak Pareto and IIA and we have a group, uh, non-empty group, uh, which has at least two or more members. Because if you have just one member, then we are already done. We, we have proved that that group is decisive, uh, which means that that is, uh, that is the dictator. Uh, so let us look at on, uh, only those uh, uh, sets uh, such groups uh, which are decisive which has two or more members then what it says is that there exists a G prime which is a strict subset of G uh, and it is not uh, empty which is also decisive so you can actually uh, reduce it to, to a smaller set which is a strict subset and still uh, continues to be decisive okay so let's uh, try to prove that so uh, suppose we essentially partition this group so uh, we we are going to construct because this uh, here the condition is that g is already decisive that is given to you so we will uh, um, work with any we can work with any kind of uh, preference uh, profiles so let us look at this group g1 
where the uh, where the alternative so remember that uh, in order to do this construction we need at least three alternatives and this is why where the condition of um, uh, um, uh, at least three or more alternatives of uh, arrows impossibility will be useful so uh, in g1 you have this ordering of a over b over c for g2 which is the uh, uh, the remaining group which is decisive g minus g1 uh, you have this uh, um, uh, ordering of uh, C over A over B and for all the other agents uh, uh, which are not decisive, uh, I mean which is outside that decisive group, the alternative, uh, the, the preferences are B over C over A, right. So now we can, uh, what we can see is that if you look at A and B, they are actually above, A, a is above B, strictly above B for the entire uh, decisive group. Right. So this is uh, true for all the i in G and because G is decisive we can conclude that A is strictly preferred even in the uh, the final outcome F of R. So let us save this as a, as a sub result 1. Now what can happen between these two alternatives A and C? Let us consider that there could be two ca cases. I mean the final outcome can either keep A strictly above C. And in that case, uh, what we will show is this set G1 will be a decisive set. Um, yeah, so because we have constructed it in such a way that both G1 and G2 are uh, strict subsets of, of G, um, we are going to first show that in case 1, G1 is going to be decisive. And in the other case where A is not strictly preferred uh, over C, that means C is at least as much as, as preferred as A. Uh, in that case, we'll show that G2 is going to be decisive and that will end this, uh, end this proof. So now uh, we are going to consider, so in the first case where A is uh, strictly above C in the final outcome, we are considering G1. So what we observe is that A is uh, strictly above C for all the, uh, element, uh, for all the agents in G1. And the, uh, the other thing is true, so C is above A for all the other agents. So everybody uh, outside G1, C is above A. Now, so the, this uh, should remind you some sort of a, um, a property. So this is almost decisiveness. Now, in order to complete the proof that G1 is uh, uh, decisive, what we'll have to show almost decisive, We'll have to show that um, um, A is strictly preferred over C in the final outcome. Okay, so we have cons constructed R, and now we are we are going to consider all such R primes where this condition is going to uh, going to hold. So A is strictly preferred over C for all the agents in G1, and C is strictly preferred over A for all the agents outside G1. So you can, I mean, this is not a unique thing. You can have multiple uh, uh, preference profiles like R primes. Let's consider all such R primes where this holds. Then what we know is by IIA, uh, A should be strictly preferred over C as well in those R primes. Because here in this case one, uh, A is uh, strictly preferred over C. Uh, then this, sh this should be the case that uh, for all the other things, um, uh, using IIA that should also hold. So notice that IIA is a very powerful condition. I mean it is looking at all possible preference profiles and it is connecting with this preference profile. So we are getting a handle over all possible uh, preference profiles once we have a, a specific preference profile and there is a certain kind of an outcome. So once that is true then we, we can actually say that uh, G uh, actually this will be G1, this uh, uh, set G1 is actually almost decisive over this uh, alternatives A and C. And now we, we already know the uh, field expansion lemma, so because it is almost decisive between a pair of alternatives, it should be decisive over all pairs of alternatives, which we just say by the, by the name decisive, because there is no such pair of alternatives anymore, so we can just say it is decisive. Alright, so now in case 1 we know that uh, G1 is going to be decisive. When we have case 2, which means that this is not true, which means C is at least as, as good as A in the final uh, uh, ordering F of R, then uh, we are going to use this uh, uh, in conjunction with this condition 1. So we know that F is strictly preferred over B 
and we also know that C is uh, strict, uh, weakly preferred over A. Then using these two things, using transitivity, we can conclude that C is strictly preferred over B. So now we can look at G2 and G2, we look, we have considered that in a very specific way, C is strictly above B and for all the agents outside G, uh, G2, B is strictly preferred over C. So this is exactly the same kind of if condition that we have for, uh, for almost decisiveness. And we also know that C is uh, strictly preferred over B uh, under this uh, preference uh, F of R. So now we, uh, we use, we uh, construct all R primes on which this is true, uh, just very similar to case one. And for all those cases using IIA, we can say that uh, G2 is almost decisive between these two uh, pair of alternatives B and C. And then we again apply the uh, field expansion lemma to conclude that G2 is going to be decisive. So what we have uh, shown is that uh, you can always come up with some uh, strict subsets G1 or G2 of this uh, original set uh, G which was a uh, decisive set uh, and construct uh, uh, preference profiles in such a way such that uh, you have either G1 to be decisive or G2 to be decisive and that concludes the proof.